Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the best exercise strategies for arms. Uh, we've covered legs, we've covered chest, we've covered back. So today I want to talk about everyone's favorite arms training. So as we, you probably know by now, if you've been following this series, uh, the optimal exercise strategy will depend largely on your body type. People with shorter limbs will require different approaches than people with longer limbs. I'm not saying that people with longer limbs cannot uh, progress with exercises best suited for shorter limb individuals and vice versa. But if you want to get the most out of your training, it's always a good idea to select the best training strategies for your own body type. Just to briefly recap what we've been seeing on the previous videos in this series. So far, we've covered back, chest, and legs. Today, it's arms. While body type individuals with long limbs and a short torso will not benefit from the same strategy as those with shorter limbs and a longer torso. Also, depending on the mechanism you are using to trigger muscle growth, muscle damage, and mTOR, while that will require heavier loading, and also full range of motion, movements where the muscle will still be under load when it's being stretched. Uh, well, that will require a different exercise strategy than the meta metabolic factor uh, stimulus, which will rely mostly on getting that maximum pump, that burn, that lactate accumulation growth factor. So it's better used with isolated movement where you can keep that tension on those muscle load and stretch not being as important. So. When we talk about proportion, okay, and that's something I've been asked uh, before, what is long arms and short torso? What is short arm, long torso? Well, I, I use the wingspan as the easiest measure to do so. So I'm looking at someone's height, so obviously without shoes, and then the wingspan, which is from one figure and tip to the other, and I'm looking at the difference between both. And someone with short arms is anything shorter than your height, or your wingspan being less than your height. Average arms will be anywhere between equal up to about four centimeters or an inch and a half more than your height. And long arms would be uh, more than 1.5 inch uh, more than your height. Now, the first thing you need to understand is something I like to call the principle of training money. Basically, your body has a limited capacity to adapt to training. I mean, there's a certain amount of physical stress you can put on your body and have positive adaptation. Yes, when you're training your biceps, you might only cause muscle damage on the bicep, maybe a bit on the forearms. Uh, so it's not systemic. However, all stress of all body parts and even your life, uh, it all adds up because if you train a muscle, you increase cortisol production, you increase adrenaline, and these hormones and neurotransmitter will have a systemic impact. So the cortisol you get from training your biceps will be the same cortisol and will impact the body the same way as the cortisol you get from training your legs. So you need to look at the whole picture, how much overall training you're giving your body and there's a certain amount of training you can do so basically you have a limited amount of training money to invest in your training you can let's say you have a hundred dollars to spend if you put ten dollars on ten muscle well the investment you will get will be from an investment of, of ten dollars but if you say you know what i don't need to invest money on my biceps I will take that $10 and spend it on my chest instead. And my chest, which is a lagging muscle group, receives an investment of $20 without exceeding the overall investment. The overall investment is important because you, if you want to fix a weak point, you can't just add work for that weak point because that will increase the overall investment and it might exceed your capacity to recover. Too much cortisol, too much muscle breakdown, decreases anabolism, so it, it leads to less muscle growth. So if you want to invest more money on one exercise or on one muscle, you will need to decrease it elsewhere. And that will be the core principle of arm training. Those who don't need as much arms work or as much direct arms work 
to get those biceps and triceps to grow, well, they shouldn't invest in doing four exercises for both muscles because it will be pointless because they are already getting the growth from big pressing, big pulling, and maybe one assistance exercise. That's all they need to grow their muscle, their bicep and tricep. On the other end of the spectrum, some people will need maybe up to four exercises for biceps to make them grow optimally because mechanically speaking, they suck at making their biceps grow. So it's a matter of recognizing what your body will need to become its best possible. That's the principle of training money. So if we get briefly an introduction here into the strategies for each type of, of body weight. So for example, if you have long arms, so your wingspan is longer than your height, so like an inch and a half longer, uh, it will require the most isolated work for arms. As we saw in the chest video, people with long arms uh, among pressing muscles will have a greater facility to develop the pecs than the triceps. And for the pulling muscles will have a much greater facility to build the lats than the biceps. So they will need more isolated work for arms and less isolated work for chest and lats because they are naturally good at, at working that. There are those who benefit the most from having a dedicated arms day, okay? You can go out, you can use a different strategy, but if you want to have a, a whole day devoted to training your arms, normally that will work better with people with long arms. That my, personally, I prefer training for these people. I would train, uh, let's say, biceps with chest and triceps with back, normally, but the arm day would certainly work. Uh, for these guys, the big compound movement, big presses, big pulls, they will work mostly the central muscle, the chest, the back. So that's a good news because it, it makes the big muscle easier to develop. But it means that these movements will not thoroughly stimulate your arms and triceps. They will get some growth from the, these big compound movements, but they likely won't be enough to get maximum arm growth. Uh, they will also benefit the most from doing unilateral work or dumbbell work when it comes to arms training. If you look at people with shorter arms and a narrow clavicle, okay, people with naturally narrower shoulders and short arms, normally the wingspan will be uh, like sh sh equal or shorter than your height, and your hands will be hanging lower than your hip bone, okay? Because if you're short, okay, the wingspan includes both shoulder width and arm length because your shoulders are attached to your arms or vice versa. If your shoulders are narrow, it means the shoulders are a smaller proportion of your wingspan. So your arms are, are, are longer than someone with short arms and a wide clavicle. See what I mean? So if you have a narrow clavicle and short arms, these are the guys who require the least amount of isolated work for, for your arms. They, they probably don't even need any direct biceps or triceps work. They will, these muscles will grow maximally just from big pressing or big pulling movement. The flip side is that it's very hard for them to build the chest and, and build the lats. Uh, a friend of mine, a guy who's been to my seminars and who I've worked with, uh, he's a bodybuilding coach. The guy has very narrow shoulders, uh, very, very short arms and monster arms. I'm talking like 19, 19 inches arm cold at five foot two, just freaky. And he doesn't train arms at all. He also has big traps and never trained traps because every time he pulls, every time he pushes, arms take over, okay? So he actually doesn't need any arm work because he's already out of balance. Uh, big compound movement are oftentimes all, all they need. Uh, so when it comes to building your arms, their best choices would be like big movement, like a close grip bench press, dips, supinated pull-ups, uh, neutral grip pull-ups, that's enough for what they want. Now, if they decide for some reason to include some amount of isolated work, they become the true harm freaks. Uh, people who have harms who grossly overpower the rest of their body. Lee Priest being the best example. Lee Priest has the best possible leverages to get big arms without training them. Very narrow shoulders, even though, of course, when he's in competition shape, he, he looks wide. But in reality, he's not built wide. He has very short arms. And he did train arms like any body part, uh, which made his arm like super freaky at uh, 21 and a half, 22 inches on five foot two. That just doesn't make 
any sense, right? Short arms, wide clavicle. So the arms will hang around hip weight. So me personally, I have my, my hands when I stand up, I have short arms. It's around uh, middle of my hips. So that would be wide-ish clavicle short arms. So they would require a moderate amount of isolated work for your arms. Uh, they don't need a lot, but if they don't train them, they will not grow up timidly. Now, if their goal is not to have like bodybuilder look, it's just to look muscular and athletic, they might not need arms work at all. For a, a good proportion of my lifting career, I did zero arms work because just having like somewhat muscular arms was enough for me. But when I did bodybuilding, I had to do arms work. Otherwise, they would not grow to the size I needed to do well in bodybuilding, which normally requires somewhat overemphasized biceps and triceps. The big compound movement are still the main bread and butter lift for these people to build the, the arms, but they will need to add some arm oriented work if they want to get maximum results. They don't have a specific advantage in training with dumbbells or barbell, so they can pick whatever they want or whatever uh, they like the most. We saw the training strategies in other videos. Basically, you can go with muscle damage, which requires heavier lifting, a movement where the muscle still has loads in the stretch position, or movement where you can use the most weight. That's for muscle damage and mTOR activation. Metabolic factors, he's talking about keeping that muscle under tension. Normally, we would use more machine, more cables, more pulleys, more isolated work with a slightly longer time under tension, focusing on the quality of contraction, not the weight itself. You can also use intensification methods like drop sets, superset, rest pause, stuff like that. Now, if we look at <coughs> long limbs lifter, what are the best biceps exercise? If you are talking about muscle damage, so heavier movement, <coughs> you can go with barbell curl because that's likely the movement where you can use the most weight. Uh, or ideally, my pers my well, not my personal choice because for me it doesn't really work, but with people with long arms, it's the best movement. Not surprisingly, it was a, one of uh, Arnold's favorite, obviously long arm lifters, but he had big biceps because he overemphasized them in his training, doing tons of work for his biceps. Inclined dumbbell curl. So you are on an inclined bench around 60 degrees. You let your arm stretch behind you and you curl from that position. That puts a greater stretch on your bicep. Greater stretch while under load equals more mTOR activation and more muscle damage. For metabolic factors, so they will need more of these exercises. Uh, single arm preacher curl. Uh, preacher curl is good because even if it's a free weight movement, it still has pretty much of a constant tension on the muscle. Cable curls, dumbbell hammer curls, cable reverse curl, machine curl. I can see more machine, more pulleys because it facilitates keeping that muscle under tension. So for long limb lifters, normally we would go with one muscle damage movement, uh, fairly heavy, six to 10 reps and two or three exercises in the metabolic factor category. Again, some people will need as much as four biceps exercise to get maximum results. Most would probably go with, with three total movements. I would oftentimes, like I like to use a, a, an arms day or, a, or a, where I can train like A1, A2, so biceps exercise, alternate with a tricep exercise, so one set bicep, one set tricep, one set bicep, one set triceps. It saves time. If you have six exercises to do, three each, it, it makes the whole process faster. You can also combine one pec exercise with one bicep exercise or one back movement with one triceps movement going back and forth, back and forth. So that works pretty well. With long limbed lifters and triceps, for muscle damage, I would go with a GM press, uh, which is a movement where you can actually load pretty heavy while still being able to focus on the triceps and not the, let the chest compensate, which would be the issue with long limb lifters. Like a lot of people think of a close grip bench or a dip as the best triceps exercise, and they are for people with short limbs. They're not with people with long limbs. The dips with, for people with long limbs, even a close grip bench press, for people with long limbs would be mostly a pectoral exercise. You can also go with a nose breaker uh, or skull crusher, depending on what you want to call it. Bar, uh, easy bar, lying triceps extension. For metabolic factor exercises, overhead dumbbell tricep extension, rope press down, decline dumbbell tricep extension, which is my favorite. 
I, I prefer to do the the, 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 the tricep extension on a decline, you, you put the triceps under greater tension for a greater proportion of the range of motion, slightly better than the flat variation. And for the, as I mentioned here, for people with long limbs, they can still use movement like bench press, like close grip bench, like dips, but they would actually be more of chest exercise and be put on those days. Short limbed lifters with the best biceps exercise. As I mentioned earlier, it will be mostly compound movement. So we're talking about uh, the, the heavy work will normally be in the form of the big basic lift. The isolated work would be used mostly with metabolic factor, constant tension, low, uh, longer time under tension, uh, drop sets, rest pause, stuff like that. So for muscle damage, we're talking about supinated pull-up, which actually, if you look at the, uh, the EMG study, if you can add weight on supinated pull-ups, the biceps activation is actually better than in on barbell curls. So it's a very good exercise to build the biceps, especially if you have short limbs. Of course, if you're not strong enough to do pull-ups, then you can go with lat pull-down with a, a close grip and really mentally focusing on pulling with your biceps, which means not pulling straight down, pulling toward you when you're bringing the weight down. Neutral grip pull-ups, which will include more of the brachialis, and the barbell curl can also be used if you want to use a more a, a traditional bicep movement and you go fairly heavy. Uh, for metabolic factors, you can go with a preacher curl again because, because of the nature of the movement, there's still pretty much constant tension, especially if you go with a spider curl, which is a preacher curl on the 90 degrees portion of the bench. You can go with a rope hammer curl, which I really love for people with short limbs, and a cable curl. Again, when you do metabolic factor work, it's better to use cables, machines, stuff like that. So for short-limbed individuals, uh, it's really about the big basic lift. So you will rely mostly on that. Most of them, they actually don't need to train arms specifically. You don't have an arm day. You don't train biceps with chest. So you would have a workout, regular workout. And at the end, you would have one or two isolated movement for biceps. But in that workout, you include, for example, pull-ups, uh, and for triceps, you can use dips. So that would actually count as uh, a triceps and biceps exercise, even though it's more of a general movement. So you only need to have like some amount of isolated biceps work at the end of your workouts and triceps. Short limbs lifter, best triceps movement. Again, big basic lift. Close grip bench, reverse grip bench, top half bench press, dips. These would be the movements I would choose if you have short limbs and you want to develop your triceps. If you absolutely need to add isolated work, I mean, and, and short limbs lift, short, short limbed lifters will often need to add direct biceps work, but for cosmetic purposes, they probably don't need direct triceps exercise. If they are a power lifter, they might overemphasize the triceps because it's one of the biceps in a big lift than the biceps in a big lift. But if they want to add metabolic factor, isolated movement, nose breaker, decline tricep extension, triceps press down will still be your best choices. So not, not, nothing groundbreaking here. So thank you for watching this short video. Next time we're gonna be talking about the best deltoids exercise. So stay tuned and please come back.